September 3rd, 2024. Please stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, the first item up is the approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of August 13. Motion. Move to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of the Board of Trustees on Tuesday, August 13. Second. Any changes? Roll call vote. Trustee Pasherman? Aye. Trustee Braden? Aye. Trustee Sifford? Trustee Fisher? Aye. Trustee Burns? Aye. Trustee Bank? Aye. Okay, I have nothing for President's comments, but I know Matt had something he'd like to, a few words he'd like to say. Yes, yes. Um, so as a, a few of you know, um, in the evening of the day uh, after our last board meeting, a uh, smoke detector um, alerted my family to a fire at our home. Um, we were recharging a lithium battery pack in our garage after we had used our weed whacker in the afternoon and it caught on fire. Um, so after we exited the house, my, one of my sons called 911 and uh, Tinsdale police officer immediately came to the scene, check and see what was going on. Um, and then shortly thereafter, the Hinsdale Fire Department redshift arrived at our house, um, followed by fire trucks from many other surrounding communities. Um, the firefighters were able to quickly put out the fire in our garage before it spread to the rest of the house. And uh, Jeff Pendelski, our new fire chief, who's here tonight, um, graciously stayed with us into the wee hours of the morning uh, until the last people left the scene. So that was greatly appreciated. And uh, one also gives special thanks to a few other people that were, were there and were very helpful. Uh, firefighter Kevin Baker, police officer Frank Smith, and uh, Inspector Tim McElroy. Um, and while a fire is not something I would want anyone to go through, and we're still kind of dealing with the, the remnants of that, um, it is certainly going to be an opportunity to witness firsthand the uh, excellent service that our fire department provides. So uh, Jeff, thanks so much to you and your team. Uh, my family and I deeply appreciate it. Okay, good to hear. Citizens petition, anybody here wishing to speak on any matter on or off the, the, the agenda? As you all know about the uh, issue I've been fighting for, for baby changing tables to be put in, and I was told was not law. As I've continued to do more research and fight in other cities to make the same changes, I've actually found out that this is a law, uh, HB uh, 3711 is actually the law number and Congresswoman Delilah Ramirez actually made it law on August 9th of 2019. So there actually is something that can be enforced here that seems to have been looked over by many different people. With that said, I have contacted other people such as the Illinois Chicago Board of Health, and I would put this under the category of gross negligence because I do find this to be a rather gross thing that is happening. And while I did manage to get baby changing tables installed in one building, as I said before, family friendly restaurants here in Hinsdale do not have them. I don't like the idea of eating at a table that someone else could be changing their child's diaper right next to me at their table or at the table I was just at. I've contacted Congressman LaShawn Ford on this and I will be contacting other people as well. Your community development board told me that this is not the hill I should want to die on but your community development board does have five full-time employees and two part-time employees who did not tell me they had anything they could enforce even though there is a law like I stated before. Your community development gets tax dollars of over three quarters of a million dollars. I've been funding all of this out of my own time and resources. I would like it if they would show more of an initiative. If they cannot do that, as I've said before, I'm willing to do it and I've turned in an application to be on your board. 
That's all. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have a fairly light agenda today. We have no first reads, so that takes us to the consent agenda. Uh, who had the accounts payable? Uh, I, I had the bag uh, this week and uh, found everything to be in order. So I will uh, move to approve payment of the accounts payable for the period of August 7, 2024 through August 29, 2024 in the aggregate amount of $1,839,428.60 as set forth on the list provided by the village treasurer of which a permanent copy is on file with the village clerk. Second. Roll call vote. Trustee Poshman? Aye. Trustee Braden? Aye. Trustee Siffler? Trustee Fisher? Aye. Trustee Burns? Aye. Trustee Burns? <clears throat> Aye. That takes us to uh, consent agenda items 7B through F. And I had one question about one of the items just before, before we have a motion. Um, the one for street light pole replacement by Steiner Electric Company. I was just wondering if, if the new ordinance that we have before the plan commission, the light ordinance, if that impacts these lights at all, if we should be concerned about that or delay this until that ordinance is approved. Do we know? These are routine replacements, but George is, we're trying to unmute them right now. <clears throat> I think they're, these are decorative lights. So they make them George? They're not, the, they're not the light fixtures, they're just the poles. Oh, just the poles. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. And if they are the fixtures, we'll, just, we'll, we'll hold off until there's a change. But I believe they're off for the poles only. Okay. Okay, with that, uh, could I have a motion? Unless anybody else wants to pull something off the agenda, could I have a motion with respect to consent agenda items 7B through F? Move to approve consent agenda items 7B through 7F. Second. <clears throat> Roll call vote. Trustee Pashman? Aye. Trustee Braden? Aye. Trustee Stickler? Trustee Fisher? Aye. Trustee Burns? Aye. Trustee Banky? Aye. Okay, and we also have no second reads today. So that takes us right to the discussion items. I haven't missed anything, have I? I don't think so. Okay. So um, the discussion, well, first discussion item, I'll, I'll, I'll start that off and Jeff can, can pick up. It just relates to a fire vehicle discussion. Um, we brought on uh, Jeff Peldilski as fire chief. We asked him to take a fresh look at all the fire department's uh, procedures and see if there's areas where we could have improvements. And in particular, I asked him to look at equipment cost and collaborating with other villages. And there are a number of suggestions that, that Jeff has come up with, but one of those that is, is of, a, of more urgent need for us to address than others relates to um, equipment. Um, and what Jeff is proposing is that we purchase a truck called a snorkel. And there's, there's a picture of a snorkel on uh, the screen there. And it's an aer aerial firefighting vehicle. And it, it, uh, as I understand, and Jeff can add to this, but it has more maneuverability than, than a traditional ladder truck to get into tight areas downtown. And so it's Jeff's view that this vehicle can replace some of the other vehicles we have and that we should uh, proceed to purchase a snorkel. Um, if we purchase the snorkel, we can sell the engine we have and the ladder truck. And we would reduce the amount of apparatus, I guess, I, no, it's not a word, apparatuses <laughs> um, uh, from five to four. And so just to go through the numbers, I, and I mostly do, I, Jeff can add the details about why he thinks a snorkel is important, but I just wanted to go through for the trustees some of the, the cost elements here. So the cost of a snorkel is currently $1.7 million, and it lasts for 15 years. And so if we bought the snorkel, which I think we would take delivery on in 2026, we could remove the the new ladder truck that is in the, um, in the CPI for 2029, 20, uh, that costs $2 million. So, be, so we, would, we would spend 1.7, we would save two in 2029. And in addition, we'd save 105,000 uh, because uh, our engine needs refurbishing in 2026. So we wouldn't have to refurbish the engine in 2026. And also we wouldn't have to buy a new engine in 2030, which would cost $900,000. So while there's some time value of money involved here, if you, if you look at it just in 
in just raw dollars, that we would be spending 1.2 million, but would be saving, um, spending 1.7 million, uh, saving, uh, deferring costs of 3 million, so we would have a savings of somewhere between 1.3 million and 1.77 million, depending on whether we finance the snorkel truck or pay for it for cash. So, so it would be a net savings. The reason why we want the trustees to, to we put on it as a discussion item to give, give Jeff the green light to, to order this, is because apparently there's some new EPA uh, rules out there governing diesel vehicles that will make a snorkel truck much more expensive if we don't buy it now and we wait until these new uh, EPA uh, rules come into effect. So as I understand it, we can order the snor snorkel truck now, put in the order, and, and get the and, and, and lock in on a price of $1.7 million. We won't take delivery of it until 2026, and we won't have any cash outlay, as I understand it, until 2026. But I think we should, these, these pieces of equipment are obviously have to be designed, uh, and so you buy, you have to have a lot of lead time. So what I'm asking the board to do is to, to, to uh, you know, ask Jeff questions, I'll let Jeff talk more about it, but I think we should go ahead and do this because I think, Jeff will tell you one, it's better for, it's, this is like, the, 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 you know, Jeff, Jeff's been around the block on this and he, he knows what the proper equipment is and he thinks this is the right thing for the village to have. And at the end of the day, we'll save, we have less equipment and we'll save money on equipment. Um, so with that, Jeff. Got it. There we go. Good evening and thank you for the opportunity to speak with you tonight. Uh, as President Cauley said, an expectation at my time of hire was to conduct an analysis on all areas of the fire department. Uh, I have identified an opportunity to realign our emergency response procedures as well as apparatus fleet to improve effectiveness while increasing efficiency. Uh, one recommendation as we're talking about right now is to immediately purchase a snorkel in lieu of a ladder truck. The snorkel operates off a single rear axle with a shorter wheelbase, which allows it to have the same footprint as a fire engine. This allows it a greater maneuverability to be operated in tight areas that are present, such as in the business district, alleyways, cul-de-sacs. It is also lightweight enough to be able to be placed on driveways and parkways, <clears throat> if necessary, without creating any damage. It also has a very short and narrow jack spread of only 11 feet. This allows it to be set up very quickly and very easily. All of this being very important in relation to the building characteristics in our community. The boom itself on the snorkel is 55 feet and it is articulated, which means that it bends at its midpoint. This allows the unit to reach up, outward and down, which can be advantageous to get up and over roof parapets, working around power lines and for below grade operations such as trench rescues and collapse incidents. It also provides a basket for working on the steep roofs that are present in the residential areas as we have in town here, as well as for rescue operations. And it also provides a means for an elevated uh, water stream if necessary. A snorkel is not an ideal piece of equipment for every community, and that's dependent on things such as the height and construction features of the buildings in that community. But the village of Hinsdale is a perfect fit for this type of apparatus. The snorkel meets the same critical functions and capabilities needed both of an engine as well as a ladder truck. Many of its capabilities far exceed a traditional ladder truck when it comes to versatility in a community with building features such as ours. This versatility also has the advantage of coming to us with a reduced cost. Cost savings, as President Cauley mentioned, to be realized over the next five years with purchasing a snorkel is estimated to be $1.77 million. We are also seeking approval to immediately place the current ladder truck for sale. Keeping it any longer will only depreciate its resale value. This action will not compromise our service delivery in any way until we take delivery of the snorkel if the approval is so granted. And that's because you'd rely upon other communities to, for, for the service you need from a ladder truck? Is that fair? That is correct. 
Any questions? I have a question. Um, I'm trying to think if I should call you Jeff or, or Chief. <laughs> I'm going to try. I'm going to do Jeff. You call me Neil. Um, so this sounds very interesting. One, so one question I have for you, of course, I, I know almost nothing about fire trucks. Um, and I think some of my other trustees may share in that too. But um, so there's other communities that are configured similar to Hinsdale. Obviously, they're not as great as we are and so, so on and so forth. But so, so are they using this type of equipment? In our immediate area, the uh, outside of the city of Chicago and uh, Romeoville Fire Department currently has one on order right now. Uh, they are also used extensively in the Memphis Fire Department as their heavy rescue vehicles. Memphis, Tennessee. Tennessee, okay. Because um, I mean, I mean, do you, I mean, any reason why other other communities have not been interested in this? I mean, it, it sounds like a, you know, the, I like the financial savings. I like the capabilities it has. I'm just wondering why. You know, sometimes it's too good to be true. Over the, over the years, the glitz and glamour of having a, a 100 foot plus ladder truck uh, has taken over some decision making in the fire service. Okay. Again, um, looking at the specific needs of a community is, is more important. Okay. What is a ladder truck able to do that the snorkel isn't? Obviously, it has a, a, a longer reach to get to higher floors uh, on bigger buildings such as high rises. But so in a town like Hinsdale, the challenges in Hinsdale are the deep setbacks on the lots. Uh, yeah, we have one high rise, right? That's correct. And so, what's the plan? I mean, is it? The I remember ground mill. Ground, ground mill. Yeah. Well, no, it's not ground mill. Is it? It's the on, apartments. The apartments. Oh, apartment. Yeah. Apartment. Um, it's just behind spinning the wheel. cancer treatment center. Spinning, yeah. spinning, spinning wheel, wheel, right? Spinning wheel. Okay. Yeah, spinning wheel. So I remember that was like the driving justification for the ladder truck back back when we bought it and it wasn't in the budget we just bought it um but i i think that from what you're telling what i i think from what i've heard from you is that to the extent we had a, a, an issue there on an upper floor we could get assistance from somebody who has a ladder truck besides i think that his snorkel could also be valuable in that situation too is that right that is you are correct sir. yeah because one of the i mean i the, the, the ladder truck is not very not very maneuverable mm -hmm. and so you know I think it I think it's nice to have and as I think it does you know it makes it looks nice in parades and everything but I think this truck gives you a lot more versatility and what's the difference in reach from the fully extended snorkel and the ladder truck well snorkel is uh, 55 feet but it's articulated so your actual reach will be anywhere from 35 to 40 feet okay with the setbacks the nice thing about a snorkel is you could actually drive it up right next to the building right. to get into where you need. Right, right. Yeah, and I always figured that the ladder truck would, would have issues when you're around trees. If you try to get near a house and you had a ladder truck, you know, I, it just seems to me that it's, it's hard to get it in and around trees to get to a house that's set back from the street, and this would give you the ability to do that. Correct. I th and I think on your write-up, did you say this was lighter maybe than a, a ladder truck so you could go on driveways and stuff? Absolutely. Okay. So you don't crush somebody's drive. You put out the good news, you put out the fire. The bad news, they got to re yeah. replace the driveway. So, Michelle? Chief, I have one question. Um, we've said a couple of times we can borrow the ladder truck when we no longer have it from another community or another village. We already have that relationship in place that we can call somebody who's close to us and say, hey, that is correct. That is correct. We are already utilizing those uh, automatic aid agreements and mutual aid agreements presently. Thank you. Anything else? Anybody oppose putting in an order for, for the ladder truck? And, I, and I'm correct. We don't have to pay a dime. We don't have to put any money down, right? We just pay for it in 2026. That is correct. There is no money required until time of delivery. Okay. Everybody on board with that? Okay. All right. Great. Go ahead with it. Thank you. Okay, tollway update. Oh, excuse me, just sure thing. So, um, this is the first time we've really discussed this at all. Sure. Do you yes. want Do you want to put it on a? We can put we, it on a. We, uh, the problem is we we have to put in the order. I think we have to do it by September. By September twentieth, I think. Right. 20th. We 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 can have this um, formally on the twentieth, or I'm sorry, the seventeenth. Okay. Because that's the next board meeting. Okay. And that's before the 20th date. And Jeff can communicate with the manufacturer that we've received 
um, approval, but we want to bring it back in case there's. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it sounds good to me, but I, I'm just. This is kind of quick. Okay. This is all I'm saying. Okay, okay. We can put it on for for a second read next yep. time. Okay. And then the CIP will be updated to reflect. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, the um, Carrie and I um, were currently working on drafting the CIP. One of the things that we were determining we needed to do anyway was to up the transfer amount anyway. And <laughs> um, surprise. Well, the cost escalation in every single thing that we purchase um, uh, needs to be addressed. And so um, this will be financed through the CIP. So we're not we're not because what I said as I understand the cost savings are one point seven seven if we pay for it ourselves and one point three if we finance it. Correct. It's about three hundred and twenty five thousand right. dollars to finance over so, ten years. But we don't even have to make that decision until twenty twenty six. Exactly. Right? We don't right. have to do anything until right about the time we take delivery. Yeah. Okay. Maybe interest rates will come down by yeah. twenty twenty six. Maybe. Maybe. Yep. Totally update. No update. Uh, 150th, Michelle. Wonderful news. The plaza is under construction. Um, three quick points. Um, construction is going great. It is staying on target and it is staying on time. According to Mr. Peluso, the under paver mat is down and uh, everything in the work is moving in the right direction. Second, the plants that we have selected will be ready to go for us. I am told that they are in stock, so we shouldn't have any problems there. And thirdly, um, we are going to try to reuse some of the plants, the roses, the hydrangeas that we currently have in place and move them over to Eleanor Park, which is by Chicago and South Clay. Um, there's a really pretty park there and it could use some, uh, some love too. Okay, great. Any staff reports? No. no. Assistance petition? You have anything to say? No? Uh, no, sir. Okay, all right. Trustee comments? <clears throat> okay, somebody have a motion for a closed session? All right. I do. I move to, a move, to move to adjourn the meeting into closed session under 5 ILCS 120 slash 2C1, appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees or legal counsel, and 5 ILCS 120 slash 2C2, collective negotiating matters between the public body and its employees or the representatives or deliberations concerning salary schedules for one or more classes of employees, not to convene into, not to reconvene into open session. Can I have a second? Second. second. We'll call vote. Trustee Pashman? Aye. Trustee Braden? Aye. Trustee Siffler? Trustee Fisher? Aye. Trustee Burns? Aye. Trustee Bank? Aye. Thank you.